Hi, everybody. This is Marguerite Rigoglioso, founding director of Seven Sisters Mystery School. Welcome to the global call on what is fifth dimensional consciousness, why this means you, and why the time is now. I am absolutely delighted to be here with you all. We have more than 200 people registered for this call from all over the U.S., as well as Canada. Canada, the UK, and I just learned Italy as well. So you are in very good company. Let me just start with a few details. There will be a few slides with this call. Um, some people really like to learn and have their learning enhanced by the slides. It's not absolutely essential that you look at them, but if you want to, you can go to the web link that you were given via email. A lot of you are already online. Some of you are on the phone. Once you get to the uh, web link, click the Slides tab to the left. And then, depending on whether you prefer to listen via phone or listen via web, click the, the button that says Sync Up With Phone or Sync Up With Web, depending on the mode you're listening on, so that the slides will advance at the same time as you're hearing me because for those on the web, there's an 18-second delay, so you want to make sure that if you're listening from the web, you're, you're syncing up with that, and if you're listening on the phone, you're syncing up with that. Now, if you are on the phone, don't, and you, when you want to look at the slides, on the web link, don't click the Click Here to Listen button if you're listening on the phone, because you're just going to get feedback. It's going to be like a double... Uh, you're going to hear double sound, and so just pick one or the other. Letting you know that unless I open up the phone lines or unless I open up your particular phone line, you will be able to hear me, but I won't be able to hear you, nor will other callers. And, of course, for people on the webcast, we cannot hear you. Um, I can see if you um, provide any Q&A. There's a little screen in the corner there but we can't hear you. But I can see who's on the phone line, and I can see how many people we have on the webcast, so you are not an anonymous entity, which might be comforting to some of you. And if there is time toward the end, um, I may take comments or questions that you can post in the little box um, to the left, bottom left of the screen. One thing I always say on my calls is, asking that you, whenever you're listening to this, whether it's live or whether it's later, that you please be sure to be participating while you're in a quiet place and that you please allow yourself this moment just to be listening fully without multitasking. I know that if you're online, it's tempting to go back and forth between email. Um, if you've got your phone, it's tempting to be texting. But Here's the deal. Fifth dimensional consciousness, which is what we're going to be talking about, is really best cultivated when we are fully in the moment and not multitasking. So for all of you who are on the live call and for all of you who are listening at any time, really give yourself this time to be present with what's happening here. This is for you. You know these times are rare, few, and far between, and it really is important that you allow the information to come in, that you allow both sides of your brain to be fully present to what is happening. I um, advise that you have something to drink with you so you can stay hydrated, and you may want to have a notebook and pen so that you can make any notes. Okay, we've got people still coming on the call, so I'm going to be doing a few announcements here. Uh, I know you're eager to get to the meat of today, but um, there are a few things for me to share with you. First of all, many of you already know of Seven Sisters Mystery School, but some of you don't. So I want to briefly mention who we are. Um, we are a school that has uh, physical locations and virtual locations, and we offer in-person and online courses, programs, events, audios, books, guided meditations, private mentoring, private sacred career counseling, and more, which are all dedicated to restoring the ancient way of the priestess and the authentic priest in service to today's world. 
and as many of you have already discovered, you can find us at our website at sevensistersmysteryschool.com. And on that landing page, you'll find a free video in which I talk about the times we're in and why you are needed to step up as a spiritual leader now. Yes, you. If you have made this call today, most likely you are being called to step it up. And uh, I also offer there some free audios on topics such as what it means to be a priest or priestess today, why women and men are benefiting from an embrace of the goddess, and then my signature work, what divine birth is really all about and why the portals to this understanding are opening back up to this ancient esoteric practice now. So do take a look there after the call, and there are a lot of resources for you there, quite a few of them free under the free resources tab. I wanted to mention that on December 21st, we held a Seven Sisters Stellar Solstice Ceremony in the San Francisco Bay Area, which was quite powerful. Some of you on this call were there. And we have made the audio of my introductory talk and channeling from later in the evening, about an hour total, also available to you for free. And once again, you can find that at sevensistersmysteryschool.com under the free resources page once you enter fully past the landing page with the video and into the site. And in that audio, I discuss um, one of the main things that was a, a feature of the evening, which was the invitation for humanity to reopen the healing temples that in ancient Greece were dedicated to the ancient god of healing known as Asclepius. This was a human man who had a wife, daughters, and sons who were all healers and through the great ascension mysteries, he ascended to the divine plane and then operated as a great god of healing. And his temples were healing temples known as Asclepions, in which the primary healing modality was dream incubation, uh, in which the healing would come through a revelation through a dream. But there were also other methods of um, integration and healing that were happening in those temples. So there is a call on the inner plane for us to open back up the Asclepions right now because goodness knows our hospitals are really not entirely doing the trick, although there is many good, much good work being done and we really honor our healthcare personnel, but we need more of an integration now. I also, in that talk, discuss uh, a little bit about humanity's cosmic origins in the stars, particularly as that relates to the Pleiades which is not just another New Age concept, folks. The ancient Greeks, the ancient Egyptians, and many indigenous cultures around the world have Pleiadian origin stories. That is something I'll be discussing a little bit later in this call. And in the Cosmic Q&A portion of that call, which was my first public channeling, um, we focus on interesting audience questions, such as how to help people with depression, new paradigms for relationships as we're going into this new era, how to work with children similarly, and so forth. So um, a lot of what is uh, shared there dovetails quite nicely with what we are going to talk about today, and I just wanted to draw your attention to it so you could look into it after the call. Uh, last announcement, Seven Sisters Mystery School also has a line of offerings coming up for men the first one of which is the Claiming Your Authentic Priest Self Workshop, an afternoon for spiritual men who want to step it up. And that's going to be uh, Saturday, February 9th, 3 to 6 p.m. in El Cerrito, California. For this circle, I'm going to be working with a friend of mine, Richard Spadoni, and we are going to offer a space for men to explore what it means to be an authentic priest today not associated with any of the traditional religions necessarily. We will offer structured activities and sharing time to help men get at their deepest questions and longings regarding who they are as sacred males. So we invite men to um, consider coming to that. We invite women to consider gifting a gift certificate to the sacred males in your life. Sometimes they just need a little encouragement because while women have been organizing for decades now in their sacred circles, there has not been that much activity with men and the time is really here for men too to join in this evolutionary kind of spirituality. Um, so um, that's enough for announcements right now. 
I wanted to just give a little bit of background about myself. Who am I? Talking about this woo-woo topic of fifth dimensional consciousness. Well, I'm first and foremost a scholar and researcher of the ancient Western mysteries, particularly as they relate to women and the reemergence of the sacred feminine. Some of you know that I've written two scholarly books on virgin birth as an actual practice of priestesses. And those books are The Cult of Divine Birth in Ancient Greece, which incidentally has just come out in Italian, and I'll be going to Italy to launch that, and Virgin Mother Goddesses of Antiquity, which has just come out in paperback, so it's now affordable for people. And you can find links for those on the store tab of our site. I hold an undergraduate degree in psychology from Vassar College and a master's and doctorate in philosophy, religion, and humanities from the California Institute of Integral Studies. So I am a grounded scholar, and I also happen to have been on the spiritual path for the past several decades. And that means that I've worked in various modalities to access and cultivate in myself altered states of consciousness, anything from simple intuition to more full-blown cosmic awareness through ceremonial trance. So the information I will be sharing with you today comes from a weave of my intellectual understandings with my clairvoyant ones, cultivated over the last 14 years intensely, including two and a half years in the Bay Area clairvoyant training program. And so at this point, those two ends of the spectrum, intuition and full altered consciousness, are converging such that I am receiving downloads regularly at the drop of a hat, the ring of a phone, the steam of the shower, any time, day and night. I mention this because I am what I consider to be an example of someone entering fifth dimensional consciousness, and it's from this place that I speak about our topic today. I did not start out as a full-blown psychic individual um, I was, you know, an Italian girl from the Bronx. <laughs> I went through the regular school systems like everyone else. And um, it has just been over time and through my natural interests and my proclivities, my karma, that I have begun this exploration and really found that I have been able to open, 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 and open. So, okay, let us just more fully get here. I'd like us to start by having us all close our eyes and take a deep breath in together, inhaling and exhaling and inhaling again and exhaling and another breath, inhaling. and exhaling. And as you sit, I'd like you to be aware of your body, the contours of your body, the pull of gravity, and become aware of your pelvis. Women, your womb or your womb space, if you do not have your uterus anymore due to surgery, and men, your um, sexual power area. And from your ab- from this abdominal area, Visualize the entire circumference of your abdomen as a large grounding trunk like a tree. And we are now asking Gaia permission to send that grounding trunk deep down into the earth. As you sit, you are seeing that trunk go deep down all the miles to the center of the earth where scientists are now believing there is a molten iron crystal at the center. And you are seeing the ends of your grounding trunk wrap around that crystal three times. You are connected now with the consciousness and the heart of Mother Earth and her womb. And you are becoming aware that you are more than your body, that you have an energetic field that extends out from you, literally and technically infinitely, but its bulk is three to five feet out from you in every direction, above, below, 
in front and back. Become aware of this and allow this auric field to transform to a beautiful gold color. And as a part of entering fifth dimensional consciousness, we are just simply going to put our attention on our hearts. What I'd like you to become aware of is the energy of pure, unconditional love. Allow your belly to relax as you do this and just settle into your heart. Physically feel this area. This is, a, this is one of your chakras. Allow this to expand as though it is expanding outward and as you're doing that you are feeling more and more love for yourself complete total and unconditional love no matter what is going on in your life no matter what mistakes you have made in the last hour or day or month no matter how adequate or inadequate you feel, how worried or anxious you are about anything happening in your life, allow yourself to feel this vibration of love that is available to you. Continuing to allow this heart space to expand. Now become aware of the hearts of everyone who is listening in on this call from all around the United States and beyond, now or in future. And see yourself just sending a friendly pulse out from your heart to each of those people. and to everyone beyond that. Because as we know, all time is actually simultaneous. So we are not only linking with those on the call at this moment, but all of those who will be clicking onto the website and listening indefinitely into the future. And beyond that, to our global community. Feel this taste of what it is to start connecting with fifth dimensional consciousness. It begins with your self-love and it expands from there. Taking a deep breath in and exhaling, I invite you to open your eyes now. So, what is this fifth dimensional consciousness business all about? People have been talking about the shift from 2012 to 2013 as being significant for the human race and the planet. Most of you on this call are probably aware of some of those discourses and dialogues. Maybe some of you have felt that shift. Maybe some of you haven't. Maybe some of you have felt it and then have felt a kind of return to business as usual after the big solstice on December 21st. Or some of you may have even experienced a negative dip. That is normal, whatever you're experiencing, okay? I think that maybe the best way to start talking about what fifth dimensional consciousness is, is to share with you a question from an 11-year-old girl who came to the Seven Sister Solstice Ceremony on December 21st. During the channeling portion of the evening, she stood up with her question, and she said that there had been a rumor going around her school among the kids 
that we were all going to travel into a black hole. And she wanted to know if I could provide any illumination on the topic. Well, as the group of 100 plus people that we were, we had just collectively, prior to the channeling, experienced the panacea ritual which I had learned to conduct from priestesses in Russia. And this is a profound healing ritual that can be done in a number of ways. We did it by having participants place the photos and names of their loved ones that they wanted healing for in the center of the circle. And we all did two concentric circles holding hands entirely and having our hand on each other's knee. And I led us through this great visualization and journey to send healing energies, um, not only to those loved ones, but to our larger communities, to Gaia and beyond. And it was a profound experience in group consciousness. And particularly that potent night, which was, as many of you know, and healers around the planet understand, to be a portal into this new era. And in addition, at the beginning of the talk, I had noted that a part of the power of the time was the alignment of the sun of our solar system with the center of our Milky Way galaxy. And as I I mentioned that night, scientists believe that at the very galactic center resides a black hole. So there was indeed a connection going on during that precious time of the solstice between our solar system and the black hole of the Milky Way galaxy. And the week before, In my live program, Becoming the Professional Priestess, I had been led in ceremony as I prepared for this to take our group through a kind of preliminary reconnaissance mission in which we did a guided meditation uh, where we all collectively visualized ourselves holding hands and going through the black hole of the Milky Way together, out the other side and back, taking with us energies so that we could better lead others through the portal in the coming week. And it was, um, interestingly, uh, one of the other women in the group had received that we were supposed to do the exact same meditation. So it was clear that we were on the right track with that. So at the solstice ceremony, when this young girl asked her question about the rumors of people going through a black hole, from my channeling state, I said, you just did. How was it? And after squirming a bit, she gave off the impression that she understood what was being said. And I said, see, it's not exactly what you thought it would be, is it? And that's the precise point about our Earth community entering fifth dimensional consciousness. It might not look exactly the way you think or imagine it will. So what is the fifth dimension? Well, we know the third dimension involves length, width, and depth. In other words, solid matter. And as I have been given to understand it, the fourth dimension is time or duration of that matter. And as I further understand it, the fifth dimension is a level of awareness and consciousness that propels us beyond the four dimensions into a deeper realm of knowing and seeing. Put quite simply to my mind, fifth dimensional consciousness is psychic awareness. Now, by virtue of living on the planet in a human body, all of us are to some degree telepathic. We pick up information that is not readily apparent through the five senses. But the idea of all of us moving into fifth dimensional consciousness means that such abilities become far more commonplace, a part of the regular landscape and fabric of human existence. And what I am shown in my ceremonies, my meditative states, and moments of direct knowing is that this way of being is actually the original template for the human being. What's happening is we are simply returning to it or, put another way, switching it back on. Now, where I find myself feeling like the young girl who asked the question about humanity literally going through a black hole as though we were going to be physically torn up and churned up, is when I think about things I had heard in the years leading up to 2012, things like Earth will ascend to a new dimension, some people might be left behind, etc. I realized that I was also thinking literally and in a somewhat Armageddon fashion that the entire Earth plane might just vaporize or something of that nature. And perhaps it will in due time. I'm not, I'm not ruling that out. But um, 
another thought I had was maybe maybe that means we're going to start seeing things in technicolor, like in the Wizard of Oz, you know, if we all ascend to fifth dimensional consciousness. And in fact, that isn't out of the realm of possibility either. Perhaps we will. I had a taste of this during the solar eclipse in May 2012. There was a solar, a, a very dramatic piece of the sun was obscured by the moon. Some of you were probably watching this. And I, my uh, tack was to go up in a, um, a hillside and be in prayer the whole like hour before and after opening to whatever possible energies wanted to wanted, wanted to come through me. And as the, the sky darkened and it became really kind of eerie, I was so profoundly moved and really altered by the experience that when it was all done, as I walked back down the path, I hardly knew where I was. And um, everything did look different. It looked brighter, more alive, and I had the feeling that, gosh, a couple more notches of awareness and I'm going to start seeing the, the elemental beings, you know, the fairies and so forth. I, it was as though I had entered a new place. And, of course, that faded as the day wore on, but it was kind of remarkable. Be that as it may, what I'm understanding now is that the move into fifth dimensional consciousness overall, at least initially, may be far less dramatic and far more quiet than I expected. What I've been shown over the years is that what's happening to human consciousness is that we're all entering higher dimensional awareness at different rates, different speeds, according to our abilities, our interests, our exposure, our karma, and so forth. And that we can all occupy the same three-dimensional reality while in fact being in different dimensional realities. And here's a perfect illustration of that. About two weeks ago, I went to a sound healing concert led by Karma Moffat, this beautiful Tibetan bell experience. I went with some friends. And there were four of us sitting on a couch. And I realized later that the order of our lineup on the couch went from one level of consciousness to the other. At one end was a man who was very resistant to most things spiritual and even the experience of the concert itself. He couldn't penetrate it, and it couldn't penetrate him. Next to him was a woman whose, what I would say, spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak, perhaps. That is, she had a certain level of curiosity about the experience and has even dabbled in expanding her own consciousness, but she still couldn't really get with what was happening because this Tibetan bell experience with the horns is an extremely shamanic experience and practice. And if you have any deeper awareness of what's going on, it's, it's quite intense. Now, next to her was another woman whose spirit is very willing and who is attending trainings to open up her psychic ability. And she had the experience during this elaborate 75-minute sound journey of seeing the creation of the universe itself as emanating from sound, which then cascaded into differentiation in all the realms of existence. Not bad. And next to her was me. And after years of ceremonial work and two years of two and a half years of training, opening my psychic ability, I was having quite dramatic revelations and understandings about the multiple nature of reality and revelations about the nature of fifth dimensional consciousness itself. For example, I was shown right there that my mother's death from illness when I was 10 years old had been fully orchestrated and ordained in order for my brothers and I to have certain experiences that would open us up to our destiny. And I understood that at the time of her crossing over, my mother had been shown our destinies, that the suffering we would experience would be necessary, would all turn out okay, and that her death was actually necessary for me to become a spiritual teacher, at least one of my brothers, and as well. And this is what allowed her to release and agree to pass over. And so from this dimensional awareness, I was understanding something else. Right next to me, being blasted on the wall the entire time, imagine this, a Tibetan bell experience, okay? <laughs> the spooky, otherworldly thing. What are they showing on the wall the entire time? A running video of the old show, The Little Rascals. 
Now, anybody who's like over 40 knows what the Little Rascals is. I don't even know if they're still showing it, but it was this show with kids, child actors, um, and they would, you know, they were really cute. It was our gang, and this was a major, major show in my childhood, one of the major things I would watch. And I was like, what on earth? You know, and this is so annoying. They're showing this the whole time while I'm trying to enjoy Tibetan Bells. <laughs> well, what I realized was that this this juxtaposition of these two events was not random. The playing of the little rascals from my childhood right next to me was a symbol to me of my childhood, the very period when my mother had died. And it was a signal and a symbol to me that the information I was getting about my mother was accurate. And no one consciously would have planned any of this. You know, probably the people at the at the venue were not thinking, gee, I'm going to have somebody go into fifth dimensional consciousness about their childhood mother's death. You know, no. It was an orchestrated dance on another dimensional plane. It was all operating in a kind of perfect, purposeful mesh, okay? Later in the lobby, I encountered a woman who has a sacred calling to help keep and restore the bees, which are being killed off, as we know, which is a whole other story. And in ceremony, just that week, I had received many revelations about bees and the critical role of priestesses in working with them, information that I've been asked to share. So I shared some of those revelations with this woman, and it was very validating to her. Meanwhile, all these other synchronicities of connection were happening with my encounters with all these other people in the lobby, some of whom I knew, some of whom I didn't. And I realized this interplay was exactly a demonstration of the fact that I have entered fifth dimensional consciousness on a, on a broader level, this kind of quick communication among people, heightened signs and symbols and synchronicities. All this means that I am indeed dwelling on the other side of the portal particularly when I stay open to it. And it, this phenomenon was accelerated and aided and abetted by the fact that I was with other people of the same vibration. This wouldn't have been as sparking of an evening had I been with, say, a group of engineers, right? So there's a morphogenetic field that happens when there are multiple people who are able to access these realms. Meanwhile, the man from the other end of the couch had fled and flown to the car as quickly as possible. He was waiting for the rest of his companions to join him. He could not partake at this level of dance. And, you know, that's okay. That's okay. That's where he is. But the thing is that um, more of us are going into this realm. And this is the first level of ascension of the earth plane, this kind of heightened individual awareness and group synergy. Now, many people, perhaps some of you, have been de dwelling in this dimensional reality for quite some time. There have been cultures that have been dancing in this realm collectively, and there have been many light workers who have been working very hard to open the portals for those of us, um, meditators in traditional religions as well as New Era people. But the point is that for more of modern society and modern Western society in particular, we are having access to this type of awareness. More people are doing the dance. Why is a big topic, but the short story is that it's a combination of forces beyond the material plane working in tandem with spiritual servers on the planet to open the doors. So one by one, people are getting on the dance floor. And when enough of them get on that dance floor, the entire energy in the room shifts. And what I've been given to understand is that there's a kind of hundredth monkey syndrome. We're, we're sort of familiar with that paradigm. When a certain critical mass of people all key into the fifth dimensional psychic open consciousness vibration at the same time, we will, on the planet, attain the next level of this phenomenon. There will be a kind of rapid and immediate restoration of the fifth dimensional grid on the planet. It will travel around our sphere in an instant, restoring the light codes. And I have been shown that this was once this grid this psychic fifth dimensional grid was once the protective ozone of the planet. But that because the earth was such a paradisical realm, one of many throughout the universe, it was besieged by unfriendly, hungry, predatory energies until that protective sphere was worn down and then punctured like Swiss cheese. 
And further exacerbating that, which was a part of that, was the destruction of the natural environment, which held that light-filled energy. The minute those energies were able to puncture the fifth-dimensional grid on the planet, a meme, a thought form, went into the first human who felled a tree without its permission and killed an animal without its permission. That's what the guides have shown me. We used to be Eden. The stories of Eden are real. But that once that chink in the armor was found and that human was affected, it created a domino cascade that has been leading to the present moment. And those natural realms have been destroyed in in large pockets, and the holes in the Swiss cheese have gotten larger in the fifth dimensional grid. And in urban areas, the holes are tremendously large, and those places become pockets of amplified suffering. So each person opening to fifth dimensional awareness is contributing to building critical mass that will trigger the situation exponentially at some point, allowing for the protective, heightened consciousness grid to envelop the planet once more. And at that point, we will start being able to work with our natural world in a more intensified way, communicating with it, receiving information from it in in the indigenous way and beyond because it will be a new rung of the spiral. We are not necessarily going back to, quote, the old ways. We are moving ahead to the ancient future, as as many people have used that. When this exponential shift happens, there will be an elevation in the nature of human experience in this realm as a whole. Human existence will have the opportunity to go into a far more pleasant and healing and creative direction. It will be like going from a cold, harsh winter to a warm summer. The energy in the air available all the time will feed and nurture us in a natural way rather than keep us contracted. And there will be a general elevation of emotion and well-being as we are all able to consciously and unconsciously tap into the energy of this grid. And we may start to see actual shifts in the nature of the physical human as well as the natural world. So we are at the point of shifting upward from the nadir, the deep trough in which we have been for a long time on the earth plane. And I have been shown by the guides that, that these predictions of, of the of the wheel turning, of the age turning are true. We have all incarnated not only to witness this, but to help usher it along. And for that, this really just deserves a moment of just taking a breath, taking that in, and celebrating that. And celebrating yourself for being curious. And for all the work in this and other lifetimes that have led you to this moment and to wanting to be part of this great answer, part of the re-edening, the re-edening of planet Earth is what I call it. We are restoring Eden. And the Eden is about being able to see and operate in these other dimensional ways. And I've also been shown that there are other layers to the grid that can be added. And one is what I call the womb grid. And the womb grid is a layer of the grid that is created and maintained by women. And what it involves is women mentally and visually connecting their wombs with the Gaia womb at the center of the, of the planet and connecting with the galactic black hole the center of our Milky Way galaxy. The black hole is a womb. It spews forth new universes in another dimension, and scientists are beginning to understand that. When women link up their wombs with the Gaia's womb and the galactic womb, and then they mentally link their wombs with the wombs of all women on the planet, they restore the womb grid. And it is through that network, that mesh, that net, the internet of a different kind, that women can begin to seed and send information, higher level consciousness thoughts, love vibrations, healings, oracular information from the realms, and so forth. So I work with women in in what I call a womb grid meditation that I was given in ceremony 
to share with women and, and we have that. We have a, a guided meditation download C D or, or hardcover C D um, that a lot of women are now starting to use and activate because it is important that while we get this fifth dimensional grid going on, that women assume their proper role as real stewards and guardians of this um and you are you are intricately woven into this womb. Men are too, and we are um, beginning to discover what is the what is the proper role of that. In a lot of the ceremonies that were happening at the solstice, people were all intuitively, in a sense, having the same ceremony, which was balancing of the masculine and the feminine, with the scepter of leadership being passed to the women, and the men assuming their position of guardian of the border. They were coming around the circle to guard the space so that women could do this kind of sacred activity because it is their wombs that is so central to the healing and health and well-being of the planet. And that is just something um, that we are returning to. Partly why is because the womb of the woman is a replica of the great cosmic womb. And that is something that I'll be talking about uh, a little bit later on the call. So um, I'm just going to move our slides a little bit. Um, Some of us on the call are already accessing fifth dimensional or psychic awareness, but how can more of us do so? Or how can those of us who are doing so access it more deeply and amply? Um, I'm going to share more on some nuts and bolts on that, including a couple of um, visualizations. But first I'm going to talk to you about a resource. I'm offering that will allow you to go more deeply and stay connected with this information, with me and with this community, because we will need to continue having our touchstone, reminders, and sources of inspiration during this time. You've all seen, some of you had this bright solstice kind of awakening. Um, it can It can slide back into business as usual very quickly, and there are forces at work that like that to happen. Because once we get into fifth dimensional consciousness, certain energies that are connected with the planet don't get their food anymore because they get food out of suffering. And that is just a plain shamanic fact. It's not to make anyone paranoid or scared, but it is just to say that this is the balance and the dance that we are we are dealing with. You know, we're dealing with titanic forces. So um, to avoid getting back to the pull of... Uh, inertia and keep the spiral generating upward. The resource I want to tell you about is my new webinar called Reclaiming Our Starry Origins. Reclaiming Our Starry Origins, Cosmic Womb Power to Guide Your Sacred Path. And it very much relates to what I was just saying, the concept about the universe as being a womb. Now, some of you are familiar with the lush visuals, the mystical concepts, and inspiring support that I offer as part of my webinars, and this one will continue even more deeply and provocatively along those lines. This is a mind-bending, mind-blowing, mind-opening kind of webinar. It is the type of information that you need to have triggered into you so that you'll further crack open uh, to this level of consciousness. I've done pieces of these um, presentations elsewhere, and it, it's, it's very altering for people, and that is what we need. So. It, it, it's of interest to people of all genders. If you've had an inkling that it all began with a big birth, not a big bang, you know, reframing that cosmic origin story is very important, number one. If you sense the universe is female in nature, and that's not to leave out men at all, but just to say what is right relationship here among the genders going all the way up to the highest level of existence, If you know feminine wisdom is the key to balancing our lives and the planet once more, and I would venture to say most people on this call do feel that, whether you're man or woman or any gender. And if you want to pour your soul into the great fifth dimensional awakening happening now, the time when we have chosen to incarnate specifically to be stewards to this, then this inspiration, this webinar is full of inspiration for you. And what it offers is Um, I'm just going to go back there. Five online calls. So you see this medium is not too bad, really. I resisted teaching in this medium, but 
It's allowing me to reach people in England and Italy at the drop of a hat rather than having to go over there, which I love, of course, but can't happen every week, right? So it consists of five online calls. Three of them have gorgeous slides, and two of them allow live connection with me and the participant community for Q&A and mentoring. Plus, you get a half hour of private mentoring by phone with me to talk about what you need for your next spiritual steps. And I'm doing that in my current webinar. And I love it. And I think that the people who are participating really love it. There's a lot you can accomplish in that half hour. And we start making a connection. And more importantly, you start making a deeper connection with yourself through that simple action. And then I'll have a private face group a uh, Facebook group for sharing and continuing this for revolution. The calls start February 7th. They go through April 4th. They're every other Thursday at the same time frame, 10 to 11.30 a.m. Pacific. But you can listen at any time. You don't have to be present for the calls, and you can view the slides as well. And again, it's available worldwide via phone or web. So the call, the content, the first one is Awakening to the Cosmic Womb, Reclaiming Earth and Universe as Virgin Mothers. Now, some of you around the world have seen this presentation. Um, I will be adding new layers to it, and it is worth seeing it again, particularly in the context of the calls I will be doing, because now we can really move somewhere with this material. So this is where I look at the scientific validation for the idea of the universe as, as a cosmic womb and a virgin mother and what the implications are for us as humans, because we're talking about a holographic universe in which the principle of as above, so below functions. So it is important to, to get the metaphor correct or to step into a reality in which there is a more healthful metaphor, you see, because one of the things I've been given to teach is that it is all about whatever belief system we want to be in. There really is no one reality. It's a matter of which reality do you want to be in? Which series of beliefs do you want to embrace? And which portal do you want to enter? So I'm simply opening the portal to those who want to consider being in the, in the Shakta universe, the universe in which the governing force is female. And what that will mean for us, will that make a more healthful type of existence? Then I'm going to talk in call two about reconnecting with the seven sisters of the Pleiades, virgin star seeds of the human race. Once again, looking at the um, academic information about the Pleiades from the Greek texts as well as cross-culturally. Who were these, these so-called seven sisters, these female beings? Why do we have origin stories that we came from the Pleiades in so many cultures? And what does this mean for us today, really? That's the crux of it. Because a lot of spiritual folks have been getting transmissions and information from this realm. This is about expanding our consciousness to understanding the story beyond the story. We all have our religious stories, which limit us as to what, how, what we can consider about the nature of reality. This idea of starry origins is expanding us beyond several layers which will also assist in the moving into fifth dimensional consciousness because the reality I'm in is that it's important for us to understand the star seeding and even the genetic seeding from different star systems whatever that means we're calling it star system in our limited understanding um, there are energies and dimensions and consciousnesses and beings associated with this, but we really need to be back in connection with these people, with these beings, with these consciousnesses and energies, the positive ones of them, because they care and they have a lot of information. They've been involved in the human earth plane for a long time, and they are saying, we're trying to help you tip the balance in favor of the positive instead of the negative. Then we have a group call to stir it up and to share uh, transnationally. What are we thinking? What are we wishing? Questions you may have of me or one another. We're going to get into that. And then we're going to look at the sacred bee. Now, many of you know or sense that there's something special about the bees. And certainly it's very curious and peculiar as to why bees are dying in droves. Well, we will be looking at that. What is going on underneath that? And why is the bee 
a portal to astral consciousness and prophecy? And how can we start communicating with the bees once again to keep that portal open? Because they are really critical to the expanding into fifth dimensional consciousness as well. And then we will have a group call to conjure your future. We will be uh, calling upon the starry realms, including the seven sisters, to empower, inform, and guide our work and help us step up as agents for a positive future. So just a little more briefly on this, the tuition for that, regularly it's going to be $97 per month for four months or $337 in full. Um, Until January 22nd, I have an early bird discount going of $77 a month or $287 paid in full. That's a $50 discount um, off of the regular tuition. And for today only and for those on this call only, so you're happy that you came here, um, until noon Pacific today, 3 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. GMT, so that's a half hour after our call, Until that time, you get a further $30 discount, which means your first monthly payment drops to only $47 a month and $77 for the rest. Or if you pay in full, it drops to $257. That is a really good deal because a half-hour spiritual mentoring with me alone is $200. So you are getting um, a lot for that um, price. And in order to get that discount, however, you need to go to our site, and we will be sending you an email after this with the link for the sales page for that particular webinar. When you click to register, you have to go into the shopping cart, and there'll be a little coupon code area in the bottom left of the shopping cart, and what you put in is Starry Bonus, S-T-A-R-R-Y-B-O-N-U-S, all one word, Starry Bonus. And that should make the prices register with a $30 discount. In addition, for the first three of you who are new registrants who have never had spiritual mentoring with me, you will get an additional 15-minute spiritual mentoring call with me. And that is um, also something that can become very useful. There is a lot that can be accomplished in 15 minutes. So again, the first three of you who sign up for that between now and noon today who have never had spiritual mentoring with me will be contacted and you will get that gift as well. Okay, so moving on to more tools and resources. Um, As... as, um, One of the first important steps for fifth dimensional consciousness, and I know this may sound counterintuitive, but it's to get into a grounded, centered, and expanded state. And that's a little bit what we did at the beginning when I led you to breathing and grounding, sending a grounding trunk. That is a time-worn way of being able to have the stability from which you can expand and fly off into the other realms. Any shaman who has been involved in astral travel, you know, trance journey travel through sacred medicines or what have you, always has to have the silver cord connecting him or her to the earth plane. Without that, the person's basically going to leave his or her body and go out to the other realms and die, you know. So the grounding is really important, being centered, because that also prevents um, you from being let's say, besieged, attacked, or influenced by thought forms and energies that may not be in your greatest good. Because there's a lot that you can start accessing once you do open your upper registers, and not all of it is helpful for you or others. There are a lot of entities on the other side who would love to get their agenda across, and we have to be discerning and careful. And having the grounding is really, really critical for that. Another very important aspect to developing fifth dimensional consciousness is developing knowledge of how to work with your chakras and how to open them up or close them depending on what is needed at the time. These are critical foundational elements. I'm not, I don't have time to go into a long discussion of the chakras, the chakra system, 
but um, there are many teachings out there about chakras. And basically, just in brief, as many of you already know on the call, there are seven major chakras in the body that go from the root or perineum, where you sit, all the way to the crown of your head. And of course, they go beyond, and there are others in different parts of your body. But those are the main ones, seven ones, seven of them. Um, fifth dimensional consciousness, ultimately, the ultimate goal that I'm shown is that they want to enable humans to be walking around with all of their chakras open 100% and oper operating in harmony with one another and with others. Right now, when we have our lower chakras in, in our abdomen and belly, the lower ones that have to do with survival and sex and power, often those have been the attack chakras by a lot of the negative energies onto the planet. And those move through family systems and so forth. A lot of times if we have those chakras open 100%, there's trouble because there are a lot of entities that lodge there, that operate, that make us feel upset, uh, that make us feel dependent, uh, frightened about our existence, all that. So on mass, humanity is not entirely ready to have the first, second, and third chakras open, which is partly a problem because women will need to be having their womb space, their second chakra, completely open in order to have the womb grid maintained on the planet. So it is critical that women continue to clear and clean that womb space, which means all old lovers, um, any dependent cords that are coming to you from children who are over, over two years old or loved ones on this side or the other side or people that are, you know, you're, you are dependent on you or you're in some kind of strange contract with them. Okay, there's a lot of clearing and cleansing that's going to have to do happen there. So for now, most of the psychic schools advise closing the lower chakras, having the heart chakra open maybe 30 to 50 percent for neutrality, because this is another mistake people make right now. They think that having the heart chakra open like the bleeding heart of Jesus is going to solve all the problems right now. And it isn't right now because we don't have enough discernment. So what ends up happening is that you can tolerate a lot of crap by having your fourth chakra open, your heart open, way more than it needs to be. Closing it down to 30, 40, or 50 percent allows you a little bit more rationality or to see people suffering without having to replicate it, going into empathetic patterning around it, or trying to solve their problems. Okay? It doesn't mean being hostile or harsh. It just means being able to have your boundary for right now. Okay, as we are all collectively ascending. The throat chakra can be open anywhere between 50 and, 50 and 95 for you to be able to express yourself. The third eye in between your eyes and in the center of your head, that's the sixth chakra. That's the, a key one for fifth dimensional consciousness. That's the, the chakra of sight and seeing on multidimensional levels. You want that one to be open 100%. Similarly, the crown chakra at the top of your head where you start meeting the other worlds and the guides, that can be open 100%. Um, and then there are, there are other chakras beyond that. But those two are right now the communication portals, the main ones that we can be working with. I often advise people to put a little cap of gold over the, the, the crown chakra as well because you want that to stay, um, to, to stay really clean and clear. Now, be aware of people doing any sort of manipulations or touching your head. No, no. That's my guides just tell me that is not something people should be doing unless you absolutely 100% know this person and have a history with them and know that they are only in it for your greatest good. So that's a little bit about the chakras. Now, working with them and opening them involves, hate to say it, people, but a daily practice. Oh, my God, a daily practice. And I'm going to say the M word, meditation. Ah! Okay, some of you already are involved in meditation, some of you are not. I took a long time kicking and screaming to get into it. And I didn't like any of the traditional meditations that were going around because I'm like, this is boring. So finally, I found a meditation that worked for me. It's through the Foundation for Spiritual Development and the psychic schools that are here in the, the Bay Area. It's an active meditation in which you are running a, a colored energy through your system. I can't, I'm not um, authorized to teach it yet, but... Um, I like that because it keeps me busy and it keeps me focused. 
and it's moving me ahead in a quicker way to where I want to go. So um, you can find your appropriate type of meditation, and there are many, many meditation CDs to guide you. Do anything, anything at all. You know, we have a womb grid meditation to help women do exactly what I was describing in the earlier part, which is to connect your womb with Gaia's womb, the galactic womb, and all all women's wombs. Um, something for you to 30, 60, 30 to 60 minutes daily to be tuning and advancing your psychic instrument and spiritual growth. If you're not doing that, it's just not going to happen, people. Not right now. The generations of tomorrow rely are relying upon you today to do this work so that it can be easier for them to open, okay? Because think about 40, 50, and 100 years ago, you had a couple of swamis way the heck up in the mountains, thank God, they were doing it, opening the portals for you so that you only have to meditate 30 to 60 minutes a day, okay? But we've all now got to be stewards for the next generations. It's going to be a long-term picture, people, seven generations into the future, you know? Got to think ahead. And it's part of your spiritual work, not just for yourself, but it's your service to be in meditation and opening your consciousness. Um, Altered states work. One of the most gentle and effective ways for entering into an altered state in which you're going to get major downloads of information is breath work. Now I know of two forms of breath work. One is holotropic breath work developed by Stan Groff. The other is known as clarity breath work. And this is the one I recommend because it's a bit gentler, yet just as effective. I do know that in the Bay Area, there are classes taught by Ashana Solaris, uh, who is on the um, the slide there, A-S-H-A-N-N-A, Solaris, S-O-L-A-R-I-S, and Dana, D-A-N-A, DeLong, D-E, capital L-O-N-G, and you can find them on the internet, and if you're not in the San Francisco Bay Area, it may be that they can give you referrals closer to where you are, or you may want to travel to work with them. I understand that they are excellent, um, and there are many, you know, there are many other breath workers teaching. But that can be a very, very powerful and important way for you to get a quick download of what's available for you on the other side in terms of information, insights, and catapulting you to new levels of growth. Must be able to get into the altered state consciousness to access this. Now, one of the more intense ways of entering is to use sacred medicines, Unfortunately, many of them have been made illegal, and as we know, this is part of the deliberate program to disconnect us all from direct knowledge with the divine. So this must be engaged in carefully. I can only state that I am not advocating the use of illegal drugs, particularly not among minors. It is every person's spiritual responsibility, personal responsibility, to decide what is right for them and to definitely find teachers to work with in this regard if you do choose part of this path. Um, at least to serve as sitters to help you guard and guide the space. Aside from going into full-blown altered states, it's important that we find places where we can engage in regular and progressive psychic training. In the San Francisco Bay Area, there is this Foundation for Spiritual Development, Psychic Horizons, Berkeley Psychic Institute, Asclepion, and others. I'm sure many of you know places where you are locally. And um, at some point, Seven Sisters Mystery School may have kind of like a board, um, an online board on which we can be sharing some of these resources. Uh, But yes, developing psychic skill is something that can happen. I just didn't think it was going to be possible for me, you know, because I wasn't born like the psychics that I would go to, you know, on the East Coast when I lived there. But but you can cultivate it. You absolutely can. And that is what is being required now. It's not a frill. It's becoming more and more of an imperative. Another very important aspect of cultivating awakening is to get out in nature and spend time in contemplation and communication with the elemental beings and earth forms, the trees and the plants and the other elements. And as you begin to open your psychic awareness through these other means, you're able to hear and see more and more of these messages and communications and beings. And once that starts happening, it really starts creating a positive vortex, a positive spiral. 
And um, one of the things that I've been led to and a number of uh, people I know have been led to is is to start opening the portals at various ancient sacred places. Now, it has to be done responsibly because there's karma attached to it and there is, um, you, it's best that you know what you're doing um, because a lot of these places have gone neglected because the natives or indigenous people have been decimated, are no longer caretakers, are no longer in communication, and so that's another way that the, the um, fifth dimensional grid has gotten holes in it. Or, or darknesses. We we don't we have in the Bay Area and, and, and all over the world. I mean, every neighborhood you have, there's a sacred place. There's a place where the energy is higher. Start going there, sitting there, communicating, participating, asking what's being required. Are you being asked to bring a group there to open this portal and maintain it? Because when those Native Americans and, and so forth were saying, you know, the well-being of humanity depends upon the ceremony, they weren't kidding. Now those ceremonies are gone, and look what's happened. Hello, you know, this is the level, folks. We are being asked at the at the 22nd in Sebastopol. There was a shift 2012 2012 event, and there was a Native American uh, woman who was weeping at the beginning of the ceremony. She said, "I am weeping because I am looking at the face, the faces of tomorrow shamans and and light workers." So she was really passing the scepter on to us, and that is what needs to happen. You know, you want to help with the decimation of everything that has gone on and all of these events in history and these terrible holocausts of Native peoples who had wisdom? Well, then get busy doing your meditation. You would do more, you would do better doing that than getting out in the street and rabble-rousing about some cause. Okay, you want to be useful? Start meditating. Start opening your consciousness. Start using your heart chakra. Um, Doing a clairvoyant reading for a client the other day, I was shown how to seed the crystals. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have know about this, and there are people who know much more than I do, but it was interesting that it started to come to me. You take crystals, you clear them through either putting them in sunlight or moonlight or salt, cleansing them of old energies, and then you put them on an altar or in your hand and you call upon the light forces or your guides to seed the crystal with a high vibrational intention or thought form for well-being, for healing, what have you. You, you, use, your, you use your creativity. So that energy goes into the crystal and then you plant the crystal in the earth. And a lot of people are doing that all around the country and the world. But that's another way. Because those crystals are a communication grid just as women's uteruses are. And so once you seed that crystal, you can be in communication with all the other crystals around the planet. And you can send that's another layer of of this grid, of this fifth dimensional grid. That's information they're just giving me right now as I'm talking to you, basically. I'm just channeling that, okay? So you see how that happens? You know, just because I'm getting open now, more information is coming through. Okay, now, another big piece of this is fully activating our DNA. Um, Now, I have been given another meditation for activating DNA, but I want to sit with it and check it out a bit. So I'm going to make that available on my webinar. I have been debating as to whether I should give that meditation here, and I I just want to sit with it a little bit. But what we're going to do right now is that um, we are just going to go into a meditation about our DNA because what they're showing me is that, um, yes, there is no junk DNA, and all of this so-called untapped DNA that they're, of course, you know, what are they doing? They're doing the whole, whole human genome. They're trying to figure out every single thing. And there are reasons for that that are not great um, in, in the shadow side of that work, okay? But <clears throat> the guides are telling me that it is essential that, that people start visualizing the full activation of their DNA because that's going to help you in a non-intellectual way exponentially be able to open your fifth dimensional consciousness. So let's just do it together right now. So just close your eyes, 
It's very simple. Take a deep breath in and exhale and inhaling and exhaling and another inhale and exhale and from your abdomen your womb or womb space your sexual power as a man or any gender you send your grounding trunk down into the earth and let it wrap you intend the activation of your aura through golden light move your consciousness into your third eye the place between your eyes and the center of your head relax your belly And now begin to bring your consciousness to the awareness of the level of your DNA inside all of your cells. That microscopic level. You feel your DNA shimmering throughout each cell and your entire system. And you now see that the ends of your DNA are repairing. Any cracks are organically being filled in and reconnecting. And we are intending that our DNA is now being fully activated. That all helpful DNA is being activated, energized, and turned on within the body in harmony and conjunction with our greatest good and guides for the greatest good of all. And we visualize this intention to transmute our consciousness into higher levels of understanding, to transmute our physical bodies into higher levels of healing. So that we may be leaders and servers for the ascension of this planet We do this in harmony with the love vibration, which we now bring into our hearts in an expanded way. And this heart energy fully infuses our DNA. Such that everything we do is with love. We now are tuning into the light beings who are working with us. And we receive from them a shower of beautiful golden light of the highest vibration. Into our DNA. To activate and fortify us with this higher level of consciousness. Just remaining with your eyes closed for a moment. So what I'm being shown is that this type of just simple meditation just done for a few minutes a day could do wonders in shifting your life, your awareness, your consciousness, and in shifting the world, transforming the world. 
because we operate in a holographic system. A hologram is a photograph in which if you look at any little tiny piece of the photograph, you see a replica of the whole in it. So when you do work, you are, re you are affecting the entire hologram, not only in this planet, but in all space-time dimensions. That is what is meant by you being divine. We are this powerful. And there are many forces that keep us in the three-dimensional thinking. And the lower vibrations. And the glass half empty thinking. Because they benefit from that. It is going to take a bit of effort a lot of community, a good deal of reminding for us to stay in our ascension consciousness. Coming back again and again, using the electronics only for good and not for its shadow addictive side that tends to suck us in, separate us and occupy us in a lower vibrational frequency that is attuned to the silicon in the computer, you see. So what they're showing me right now, I'm just channeling this for you right now, is the silicon is a certain type of crystal. And you need to be careful of it. You need to get yourself around regular crystals. And there are certain crystals you can put around your computer in order to deflect some of that energy. You have to be good to your crystals. They're not just supposed to be workhorses. They need to be cleared and cleansed and loved, and you have to develop a relationship with them. Okay? High-level technology, people. This is not new age crap. Those of you who are on this call already know this. You're here because you just wanted to be reminded. Some of you already know, and some of you are teaching this, and it's wanted that you intensify this teaching. These are the high-level technologies that we already have that are not going to be made in the lab. Nothing science develops is going to be able to supersede what is already in the natural Gaia world and the human being. Remember that. If you want to restore Eden, it is essential that you keep re returning to the organic world. And there are other ways that you can continue to serve as a leader aside from your meditation. Keep following your inner callings. Follow the messages you are receiving. The shower is a very good way to receive messages because it clears you. Reframing negative into positive, very, very important. We are in an addiction scheme and spiral in which we are constantly encouraged to get into a negative pattern, seeing things in a negative way. We are being encouraged to reframe every event to look at what its gift is and to release the struggle around it. Leading by example, your actions and energy are the best form of mentorship of others and they are the best form of world activism. And keep talking up fifth dimensional consciousness because it really comes down to whether we believe we can be in fifth dimensional consciousness or not. So you see, this exercise and having come onto this call is an example of your flirting with a belief structure and dabbling with whether you want to enter into this belief structure or not. Some of you are already there. Some of you want to be reminded. Some of you wish to be persuaded. If you want to go into the reality that we are ascending to fifth dimensional consciousness, and go there. 
carry that forth and act forth as though you are and we are. That is how powerful we are. And that is how simple it is. It is about relief. It is about belief. It is about belief creation. It is about reality creation. This is fifth dimensional consciousness. So, I would like to look at some of the comments. We have a comment that's saying, and I invite you now to open your eyes. And if you wish to put comments in the comment board, please do. Also, if you are on the call and you have a comment or question, you can press star two. And I will uh, see if I can have your I, I will open your line. We have a comment that says uh, from Gore Bay, we are not all decimated. I am First Nations. We are relearning and the ceremonies are not gone. Yes. Very important. And I did not at all mean to in, insinuate that those ceremonies are not happening, um, that some of those cultures are still strong, that the work is still being done. Absolutely. And I did not at all mean to insinuate that somehow now uh, others or, or, you know, others are supposed to take over. No. It's about working in harmony together, and it's about helping. So I hope that that goes uh, some way toward addressing that comment. If anybody on the phone line has a question or comment, please press star 2, and I will open up your line and invite you to talk. And somebody is asking, what crystals are helpful to put around the computer? One thing that I have learned is that obsidian, obsidian is something that's important. It's a black, shiny stone. Um, so we are, you know, whether it's crystalline in structure, I, be, I believe that it is. I don't quite know what the scientific aspects of it. But obsidian will, will absorb a lot of negativity. I was able to get some obsidian from um, Pantelleria, the island of Pantelleria, uh, near, near Italy when I was there. And I have pieces that I, I use in ceremony and that I use around my computer. I don't know if onyx has the same quality, but this would be a whole study, um, and I'm sure the information is available on the Internet as to what crystals or stones can absorb negative energy. So, But that's at least something uh, to help you. Um, somebody is saying, thank you, I needed to be reminded that each action counts for the whole. Yes, it does. It does. And they, I was just channeling that very, very strongly during this call because I did not plan on actually saying that to you all, but I was really feeling that we are in this web, we are in this collective together. And she says, the DNA meditation I will carry with me. Wonderful. Okay. Um, I have one hand up here. The last four digits of your number are 6680. That's me. Yes, who's this? This is Natalia. Hi, Natalia. Hi. I just I don't know what I don't know what I don't have a question. I just have a comment of Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so deeply confronted by this. Deeply mm. confronted because I feel like I've been preparing for this for so long, like many yeah. many lifetimes. Mm. But I feel also like oh, I just feel the um the resistance that has kept me from fully stepping into this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could just feel it all in there during the DNA thing. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, I was partly, like before that meditation, I was partly hearing you and going like, ooh, I guess, I, you know what, I'm not really able to do this. This is too much. I can't, 
I can't do it. I feel weighted down, you know, and mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. unable mm-hmm. to pr- to do what needs to be done. And yet, it, everything in me only has ever wanted to do this. Yes. Mhm. Okay. So here's the thing for you: community, community, community. You've been doing it alone for a long time, and now you need to reach out to your sisters and brothers and really get out of the isolation. That's going to be very important for you, and there's going to be ways that you can release the trauma that's in your very DNA. We carry a lot of trauma from these past times of persecution, of Holocaust, and so forth. That is definitely in the field. It operates, and almost every single light worker will confront it. It will stop you in your tracks. It will make you afraid. It will make you want to stay small. It is designed to do that, and you need to just be aware of that. Say hello to the energy. Make a little secret altar to it. Feed it in different ways so that it doesn't have to occupy your space. Okay? But what you're needing is a sense of community, and that's what's really going to help you. So I'm I'm just going to – I'll leave it at that. And I'm going to go go back and mute you. And thank you so much for your comment, Natalia. Okay. Um, I'm going to look at some of the other um, comments. Black tourmaline around the computer is another recommendation. Somebody from Finland. Oh, my goodness, Finland. Hello. Hello, Finland. Everything you've been talking about is like I connected to my childhood self again. As a child or younger self, I knew all this stuff and trusted that it was the truth. Adult life has taken me further away, but 2012 brought me back through a slow birthing of myself, the slow birthing that reconnected my present self with all I knew as a child. Thank you. Yes, exactly. That is what's happening. It is returning to the level of a child, but with the sophistication and discernment of an adult. And that is part of what's happening here, that we can, re- we can return to our joyful knowledge once again. We can return to that Eden level. Somebody uh, from Long Beach is saying, uh, offering some words that help bring five-dimensional consciousness into the now. Graciousness, capable, presence, certainty. Graciousness, capable, presence, certainty. And yes, there is word magic, and word magic is a part of it, and it's a part of that, what they're showing me right now, is it's a part of that reframing of the negative into the positive. So using positive level words, joy, ascension, happiness, love, peace, just even saying that one word into your space. I remember one of my spiritual teachers, Sanea Roman, has that in her books and CDs. Just to simply say one of those words in your space can call you back, can lift your vibration. So using word magic, very, very important. Thank you for that in Long Beach. Um, Let's see. Okay, so uh, the, this beautiful Native American sister here uh, is saying, I appreciate your acknowledgement, and I did not take offense, but I did want to let you and the others on the call know that the First Nations people are alive and well and are relearning and remembering what is in our DNA and blood memory. I also wanted you all to know that the ceremonies have been hidden from the general public and more elders are starting to share with them all now. I appreciate your free call and I am grateful to you for your gifts. Thank you for your generosity of time and knowledge. And yes, thank you so much. And I'm not saying your name just to um, protect your privacy, but um, thank you for that. And and yes, that is beautiful. I I have a sense that there are so many deep pieces of knowledge and ritual that have not been shared uh, for good reason. And that maybe there will be a time now or and maybe that time is happening as you're saying where there's going to be more sharing because there are more people who can handle it responsibly. That really is what this is all about and for us to just reach our hands across and work together because an interesting thing happened for me when I was um, in one of my uh, ceremonies, I was saying to the guys, what is going on here? You have me with a past life in Greece, or many, 
I feel like I have a past life in at least one of the Native American traditions. I have a past life here, past life there, and you're all clamoring on me like to resolve the karma of these lines. And I said, what is the story? Like how many things do I have to have on my altar? And they said, pull up. And I said, what do you mean? And they said, pull up. Go up into the sky and look down. Now realize that all of these cultures you've been called to all have Pleiadian origin stories. And I was like, oh my God. Yes. So many of these cultures are united through one star system or another. And it is this unification that we are needing to feel. And this is exactly what I'm going to be talking about in the discussion of the Pleiades and the slides of the Pleiades that I talk about. This is not just a fun-filled scholarly romp. This is about what the heck does this mean and where are we going and why do we need to be listening to the Pleiades or any other star system because this is about unity consciousness. Okay. There's somebody from Toronto that's saying, to my native sister and all my sisters, blessed be, wonderful. Somebody here is saying, what happens when you meet someone who's on the sense, sense of the fifth dimension but are resisting? The best thing is just to be an example. No convincing needing, needed. Don't come from your third chakra arguing. Just show the way. That would be my recommendation. Okay. I know that there uh, there is at least a couple of other people who want to give comments, but we're going to need to conclude now. And I just want to end with um, a reminder about the Reclaiming Our Starry Origins webinar. And again, there is that special of $30 off today only for another half hour um, with the coupon code Starry Bonus, all one word. I really hope a lot of you will join because I want to be able to hear some of your voices. I want us to be able to share together. Um, and of course, this webinar is open for everyone, and we will be sending you a link for the page for that. Um, and you're free to, to share it with others. But I would just like us to just now finally close our eyes, taking in a deep breath, and exhaling feeling our grounding in the earth, feeling our grounding in the stars, feeling our renewed connection with our fully activated DNA, which we can continue to do every day. Feeling our connection with those who are listening to this information now and into the future, which really means listening to the information of their own hearts. We ask for a great blessing now and an empowerment of our work, greater certainty, and we send that blessing out now to the grid as it already is, this fifth dimensional grid. We send that out now and women, you can send it out through your wombs. That blessing. And with that, dear ones, I am going to wish you farewell. Goodbye for now. And may the mystery that led you to this moment continue to bless your life.